Mic testing, one, two, three. Namaskaram, now can you hear me? Not that there's a huge crowd. I can even talk without the mic. Um, and I I literally don't uh, remember where I left my working speech. So it's going to be an impromptu, spontaneous speech again, which I normally tend to do all the time. I don't know why. Um, so, welcome, welcome all for uh, this year's Sangha Puja. Uh, pandemic has had an impact on all of us and greatly on these days. This was supposed to have happened last year, September, um, but because of COVID, the process of learning has been slow, the process of execution has been slow. And we wanted to have our friends and family with us, um, due to which we have been postponing this event for a while. But I think it's a uh, high time that life has to go on. And with that, we decided to go ahead and have this Sangha Puja um, today. Um, the kids have put in uh, years of um, practice um, into all their dances that they're going to be performing today. And uh, I have. I need to specially mention a couple of people here who have made this possible. I started this school on February 20, uh, February 13, 
2016, um, because of a little bit of a compulsion from my mom. And somehow, even at the age of 40, I need my mom to push me to do things. Um, there are two ladies that I would definitely like to uh, note today. One is my mom, which is Lakshmi Janardhan, without whom I wouldn't be a dancer, I wouldn't be here teaching these kids. The other person who is with us today in the audience is Rani Sebastian. When I landed in the Twin Cities, um, when you are new um, and people here think you are a competition all the time, and when all, all you can see is people saying you can't do something, you always tend to like when somebody supports you and says like, yes, go ahead and do it. You will be able to do it. You will be able to be successful. She's one person in the Twin Cities when I landed here who supported me tremendously and said like, I can actually be a successful dance teacher. So these are two ladies in my life who have given me complete support to start this school. Um, the other person I would like to, it's not a speech of, it's not like a, a word of thanks right now, but when your emotions go high, I think you tend to be thankful about everything that you have in life today. I have to thank my husband, uh, Pranav, without whom, again, I won't be able to run this school as successful as I've been doing it today. I definitely call it a successful because we have completed five years today. And uh, unlike many dancers, I did my aggregate job after I had my baby. So I'm thankful for Krista, my own daughter, because of whom I've been able to be performing even today. She's been very supportive. Um, so I wanted to mention these people because of whom this is happening today. Uh, with, without much ado, I would like to start. We are already running a little behind. Um, we will start with the first item for today, which is a small rhythm on Lord Ganesha. Um, this is by uh, Madre R. Murvidharan. We have just picked the Virutam, which usually is like a shloka done in a raga. Um, the original composition had the Virutam followed by the Ganesha Pancharatnam, but we wanted to start with an invocation for Lord Ganesha. So we are just picking the Virutam from that performance. Enjoy.
my name is Anshu Kamalazikari, and this is my fifth year dancing. I started at the age of six. Dancing is a lot for me and makes me feel happy. My mind can do anything. I'm very grateful to my teacher, Athena, who guided me every part of the way. I'm also very thankful to my mom, dad, and sister, who have always encouraged me to do my best. I, joined, I enjoy dance even more because I get to be with my friends. Being part of this dance school is more than just learning about dance. We learn about our culture and traditions, as well as our morals. I am so excited for the song of Pooja. I dreamed a lot about it after the shoot is, and I'm very excited to be here. Things have been tough with coronavirus, but we're still able to do the performance, and I'm very grateful for that as well. I started dancing on February 13th. I remember how me and my friends would travel to Miss Nina's house every Sunday at 10 a.m. There we would meet Miss Nina and her daughter, Krista. Miss Nina, although she is strict, has a great sense of humor and we have a lot of fun with her. Later in our dance journey, we would meet Joanne and then Sandy. We also met the two Shias. They are very fun and have started dancing before us. At first, I remember us being very nervous and scared as we knew nothing about Bart and Austin. But later, we loosened up. Dancing later realized it was very complicated if we didn't have passion. I had a lot of stage fright at the beginning, but after doing performances for years with my friends, I started to love dancing on stage. I'm glad I was taken to that first dance class because dance is one of the things I love most. I'm glad, I'm so glad to be here and I'm very excited about what's yet, what is yet to come in this journey. Thank you. The Ragam and Raga Malika and the Tamil Adi. The composer is Madurai R. Murali Dharan and the choreographer is Nachi Ganesha. This dance is on Lord Murugan, also known as Lord Karthikeyan, who is the son of Lord Shiva and Goddess Bharati. He is the brother of Lord Ganesha and his Vahana is a peacock. When Lord Murugan was born, he was born at six days and six flowers, and when Goddess Bharati had him, he turned into one baby and swallowed all of his three places. When Lord Murugan became a little older, his father, Lord Shiva, presented him and his brother, Lord Ganesha, with a challenge. He would give a special mango to whoever goes around the world first. Lord Murugan went on his peacock, while Lord Ganesha asked if he can go around his parents, because they need the world to him. Lord Ganesha went around them and finished first, and received the mango. When Lord Murugan finished the race, he felt he was deceived and was very angry. When he was still a kid but a little wiser, Lord Murugan taught his own father what Omkara meant. Lord Murugan had asked Lord Brahma what the meaning of Omkara or Pranava meant was. Lord Brahma said he didn't know. Lord Murugan then imprisoned him. This stopped all creation. Lord Shiva approached Lord Murugan and understood the reason for his action. Lord Shiva admitted that even he didn't know what it meant. Lord Murugan then became his own father's guru and taught him the meaning of Omkara. There was once a Tamil singer named Abai who was overly proud of her work. She was also a huge devotee of Lord Murugan. Lord Murugan decided to play a trick on her by asking to her if she would like a warm fruit. Not understanding Lord Murugan's tricks, she decided to try one. He climbed up the tree to get it and dropped it on the ground. She picked it up and blew on it to get the dirt off. He playfully asked her why she was blowing on it. Because it was hot, she was very amazed by the trip and she sang for him. When he was old enough to get married, Lord Morgan disguised himself as an old man and asked Bubbly if she would marry him. She laughed and asked why she would marry an old man. Lord Morgan then prayed to his brother Lord Ganesha for help. Lord Ganesha came in the form of an elephant for help. Bubbly, who was scared by the running elephant, hid behind Lord Morgan. Realizing what had happened, she felt very guilty and shy. Then he revealed his true identity and again asked if she would marry him. We hope you enjoyed the performance. Thank, Thank you. Oh, 
Sauer's tethers gave Yaki a dethelon and was carried back by a green mean action to resonance. Highland forms of green decide how to wear body control and transitions. It is just that piece, meaning it's more focused on leg work, but it also focuses on the head, neck, head. It also focuses on the eye, neck, and head movement. Highland will begin to up knee or neck movement, followed by one the other in the second half, and later culminates with vibrant footwork and feel on other knees. A large boy is based on rhythm alone, which has a rare capacity to invoke concentration and brings out the special charm of sturdiness. The moment the other will relax the game of mind, moving and coordinating her legs, and prepare her for the dance, is most valuable in training the dancer from distraction, making her single minded and focused. We hope you enjoyed. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> 
I began dancing when I was seven years old. When I started my first class, it was not what I imagined it to be. It was not what I expected, but I was willing to still try. In the beginning, it was a little hard, but over time with practice, it became easier. Learning dance was such an amazing experience, and throughout all this, my classmates helped me in so many ways. During this pandemic, we didn't meet in person, so we did separate classes together and helped each other. They helped me when I didn't understand something and are always so sweet about it. I would like to thank Mina for being such an amazing teacher. She taught me that dance meant so much more than just moving your hands and legs to the beat. She taught me many life lessons that I will never forget. And finally, I want to thank my family for always telling me to try my best. And if you give it your all, everything will turn out great. Thank you. The dance we are about to perform is a repertoire composed by Mother I R Moriza. The ragam is Suda Danyaki and the Thalam is I. It is choreographed by Mina Chijina. This dance is a pure Murtiaki. There are three sections in the study form. Which are the melody, anipalavi, and multiple triangles. The Jadi term does not have the sadhya term or the lyrics, but instead the charnam that are sung in Torah. This dance has four main sections, all made up of advanced arguments. This piece does not focus on the facial expression, rather, it focuses on a dance which is to execute and showcase complex attributes. This dance, following its name, is made up of swaras and jadis. The Jadi theme, Sadhaginato, and the Swara theme, Sarigam. Overall, this Jadi form is a challenging dance. 
Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.
Okay, we'll take a small break in between. Uh, I would like to felicitate our chief guest because she has to be somewhere else soon. Thank you, Rani. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, she is one of the great supporters that I've had when I landed in Twin Cities a few years back. And uh, because of the courage that she gave me back then, I started it. Um, just to give a slight background, the dance style that I teach, the Bani that we say in Bharatanatyam, I teach something called as the Barubur style. Uh, if you know, um, you know the famous dancer Padma Subramanian, uh, actress Shobhna, they all follow the same Bani, and I teach in that Bani. Uh, we have, uh, this is like one of the older forms of Bharatanatyam. We have like latest work, versions, I say, because it's, um, Kalashikra style is one of the newest. Um, and it's very famous now. So, uh, but this is my base, right? Sometimes we are not able to go on our basis. When I wanted to start it in that style, she was like, it's okay, Mina, it's okay to be different and go ahead and do it. So I will never forget that first few conversations that I had with her before I started this school. So I will always be thankful to Rani. Rani, thank you so much. These kids were the first batch that I started with here. So I wanted you to be the chief guest and bless him to do more. Thank you so much. I would like you to speak a few words. Good evening, everyone. I don't think so. Okay. You guys, any, any, anyone can understand Tamil? No? <laughs> okay. Um, good evening, everyone. And uh, I'm in school, so I want to be. Uh, I want I want to keep you safe, so that's why I'm not taking you now because we are going to school every day. And um, I know Mina. Uh, I think it is in 2012. I knew her as the participant in the program. She was like uh, she came. Uh, we had a practice like every day at five or five thirty up to eight o'clock. She comes, uh, she came after the work, and she was the one who was dancing the whole time. You can't even imagine like how she was dancing for the first time I had seen her. It was like amazing. And uh, that was not classical. It's like folk dance type kind of thing. Then after that, um, I was approaching her for volunteering for choreographing, um, she said that. So um, we would love to do things, um, but passion is something different. It's like I can tell, truth is, um, passion is like truth. You cannot bury it, but it, will, it, it can be hidden somewhere, but um, it will be always there. So it's, um, you could, uh, I was, I was seeing her passion towards dance. I think you all as a parent can see that too. And I'm so happy to see her as the teacher, the participant and the choreographer. And then um, when she told me that she's going to start dance, I was so happy. And yeah, like, um, we have seen a lot of different dances. And um, my, I have three kids, like they have learned dance. They love to do dance, but I, I don't think I can see the passion in them. The passion is totally different. That is Mina. Mina has uh, too much passion towards dance. And uh, she has to spread it out. It is not, uh, it cannot go away from her because she has to pass it on. I'm seeing that like, Without having talent, like, they like I can see how much practice they had it before. Otherwise, they cannot do this. Um, like coordination was so brilliant, and in few places it was kind of um, like different. But all the other places they were um, amazing because like that much practice she has given, and then the beach was so on it, they were on it. Otherwise, we cannot get the tongue. Like this, wearing it, 
today. Just for the first time, they didn't feel it. It's not distracting them. They are doing so great. And uh, looks like they are getting ready for our engagement. This is the first step for that. So I am looking forward to see six Milas on the stage. Like, <laughs> I love seeing um, Milas uh, dance on the stage. So I am looking forward to see um, six of them as Mina. And six Milas will be on the stage one day. I'm looking forward to that. Um, congratulations, parents. I know how, how hard it is to um, you know, give something towards our kids. And, and in this situation, in COVID-19, everything has stopped and, and you guys are on. <laughs> I'm so happy to see people wearing like saris and uh, it was refreshing after so long, at least uh, after the year now. So thank you so much for having me here. Thank you so much. And <laughs> Yeah, all the best for the uh, our engagement for the kids. Support like this and then encourage them. Like, do see the passion. How uh, what is their passion? And um, encourage them towards that. Let them be good. Congratulations, kids! You guys are awesome. It's amazing coordination. <laughs> oh yeah, thank you guys. Hello, my name is Trisha Connor, and by now I have been doing and dance for five years. I'm thankful for my teacher, who's also my mother, Miss Mina, and my parents have always supported me and pushed me when I thought I could do. I'm also very thankful for my friends who are dancing with me today. We started on February 13, 2016. I started at the age of six with Anshi, Anita, and Zabi. My mother used to teach at another school, and I had come with, even just to play with the other kids. But my mother wasn't ready to give up all hope of me doing this. I had met Joanne at the school when we were very young. She had called me Krista rather than Krista, and she joined my class later on. And afterwards, I met Sun. In this dance school, I learned more than just dance. I learned Indian history, all the myths and stories behind the celebration. I learned art, specifically things like columns. And not only did I learn educational things, I learned morals and values. Morals and values like teamwork, friendship, hard work, change, respect, and to be determined all the time. To dance, we all needed more elements than just power. We needed passion and work. We had to try hard. Learning dance is fun. It really is. I didn't always know, but when I danced, I felt happy. If I had been crying before the dance, when I started dancing, I almost felt as if I had wings and was fought, soaring above the crowd. Of course, when I went on stages, I got nervous. I've remembered so many times when at first I thought I was okay, and then right before going on stage, I had to go to the back. But while I danced, I forgot about all the nervousness. And at first, I was hesitant to take my glasses off and dance. I wasn't used to it, but I warmed up. I had heard about the song by Pooja many times, and after the Shriyas did there, I started wondering when I would be there. And now, here we are. I congratulate Anika, Anchi, Joanne, Sagna, Sagna and Sandy on a successful, uh, 
successfully completing this important milestone in, in any dancer's journey. I will keep dancing for as long as I can. I hope you enjoy the dance. Thank you. Munga means auspicious lady and pure Tamil. Alavya Mangai is the Ragam Shankara Varna, and this is the Adi Dalam. It expresses Shingara Dasa. The composer of this Kirtanam is Mother I R. Murli Dharam, and the choreographer is our Guru Meenakshi Janardhan. The dance describes the beauty and elegance of Goddess Lakshmi who dances gracefully with Jati and Thalam at the feet of Lord Venkateshwara. The dance is as beautiful as a shower of flowers. Goddess Lakshmi is a beautifully good jewel made up of coral, pearls, diamonds, and other precious stones. When she is dancing, her jewelry also sways along with her movements. This dance portrays Goddess Lakshmi dancing in the praise of Lord Vishnu. Lord Vishnu peeks at Goddess Lakshmi from behind the curtain as she just dances gracefully. The music her drawings make is in rhythm with the music she dances to. Her necklace, her necklace and necklace should be danced with her. Her colorful dress attracts everyone's attention. This is one of my favorite dances. I enjoy the way we sway the steps and it makes me feel calm. When I hear the music, I start moving my feet and my hands because I'm happy. This is the very first Kirtanam that I've ever performed, so I'm excited to show everyone this dance. My favorite dance is Alame and Monday. When I dance to the song, it makes me really happy and it brings a joyous smile on my face. I enjoy this dance so much that when I hear the music, my feet automatically move to the tune of this song and I'm completely immersed in this beautiful music. We hope you enjoy the performance. Thank you. Sundali 
the power of good over evil. She is a little sister of Krishna, and her husband is Lord Shiva. The dance shows that Lord Shiva and Durga have a sweet relationship, one full of love. This dance is one of courage, dharma, love, and power. We hope you enjoy the dance. Thank you.
Years old. Bhartanatyam is something that fills me with joy and happiness. 
I feel like I'm in my own own world where I can sway to the music and bond along with the dance. My first dance class I met was Mina. That day I realized that we would have to put a lot of effort every day. I'm very grateful to have Miss Mina, Miss Mina as my guru, and I thank her thank her for teaching me by Panatya. I respect and admire her passion and dedication towards this art and for passing it on to youngsters like us. I was ready to do dance because I wanted to learn something new. My, my mother told me about how she started dance. She told me how she went to dance concerts with her mother and how she started liking dance. Unfortunately, she had to stop learning dance. That inspired me to learn dance because I want to achieve something that my mother has not yet and she can live her dream of learning dance through me. Throughout my dance journey, my mother has been my biggest critic and an even, even bigger admirer. My family has supported and encouraged me every step of the way. I'm, I am very thankful for all the support they have given me that has helped me to be here today. I also enjoy the company of my friends on Shamsana, at least carpool for our classes. In addition, we used to have a great time in the class bonding with Krista, Joanne, and Sandy. In Bharatanatyam, we also learned a lot of our culture. We learned about Indian mythological stories, and when I dance, I feel as if I'm one of the characters in the story. For us to understand Bharatanatyam, we need to learn the stories and the emotions and not that we need to depict. I also learned, learned essential life lessons of per perseverance patience, and hard work during my dance journey. I am also thankful that I have been able to continue learning dance during the pandemic. I look forward to learning more about Bharatanatyam in the future. I'm excited and happy to be a part of this wonderful experience here today and showcase my learning to all of you. Thank you. Namaskar. Namaskar. We are going to be performing a padam on Lord Aisha. The talam of this padam is Mr. Chapu and the ragam is Ananda Bhairavi. The composer is Madurai R. Morali and the choreography is by our guru Meenakshi Janardhan. Lord Ayappa is the son of Lord Shiva and Lord Vishnu. Lord Ayappa is the prince of Pandava and his bhavana is a tiger. The dance we're going to perform shows different types of expressions like happiness and courage. In our dance, the main expression we show is karma, which takes the bhava of devotion. The composer says that in this Kaliuga, that there is no one equal to Lord Ayapa because he's very kind-hearted and generous. Devotees like to visit Lord Ayapa's temple in Sabrimala to receive blessings from him. Sabrimala is in Kerala. The journey to the temple is long and hard but people still go to be blessed by Lord Aisha. In preparation for their travels to Sabrina, you wear a necklace or mala and fast for 40 days. The path from the Pamba River to the temple is very difficult with stones and thorns. His devotees endure their path barefoot to reach his sanga. Once they reach the temple, they climb 18 steps and then they pray to Lord Aisha happily. Hope you enjoy the dance. Thank you. Thank you. 
This dance depicts the beautiful relationship between Lord Shiva and his wife, wife Parvati, as well as his son Sudesha and Kartikeya. Throughout the dance, we show Lord Shiva's courage, compassion, and love. Lord Shiva's Vahana is a born named monkey who is very devoted to him. Shiva is also known as the Lord of Destruction because he destroys all evil from the world. We hope you enjoy the dance. Thank you. Thank you. 
This brings us to the end of the event for today. Um, we started with the rush. It looked like we went with the rush. It's done. Um, thank you so much. A uh, hand of applause for these girls. And the today. I want my mom. She's also watching this from India at the moment. I want her to speak a couple of words. Um, and share her experience with me. Um, me, the fans, me being her daughter, dancer, teacher, um, just trying to get her connected on the Zoom. She initially joined, but we were having a technical glitch where I had to ask her to go off Zoom. So I would request her to go on Zoom right now. You have two minutes with her. We have to add her in the presentation. 
So you will join. I know, but it was added. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, too many tasks and too little hands. So, like, we are struggling. One person can be there in one spot for one, so many days or so many times. Almost there, like I always say for the right? Almost there. Okay. Yes, he's here. Hi. Still okay now? Yeah, you can speak. Yeah, you can speak. Ah, again, you can talk now? Yes, yes. Hello, everyone. Namaste. I'm Lakshmi Janathana, and I'm the mother of Meenakshi. Thank you for giving me this honor of being chief guest for the Salanga Puja today. Thanks to everyone for being here this evening. This is a proud moment. And I'm happy to share some words here. Actually, I was very much interested in dancing when I was young. But uh, being from a very orthodox family, I didn't get a chance to. So I fulfilled my interest in Meena. When she was hardly one year old, she used to sing rhymes with action. So when she was in uh, LKG, that is lower kindergarten, I just put her on stage with a small dance. It was a competition. And she won second place because her costumes were very apt for that, this thing, for the performance. After that, she started dancing in multiple stages. Uh, she le started learning dance when she was in first standard, uh, that is six years old. When she was in seventh standard, she started choreography also. She first, she did the choreography for her school teachers for the teachers' day celebration in their school. Eighth, ninth and all, she started dancing in multiple stages, multiple uh, events. She did her Chalaga Puja when she was in ninth standard. I just uh, couldn't get her uh, accessories and costume in that days because uh, <laughs> there wasn't much fun for us. So I sold something and uh, arranged a set of uh, costumes and uh, accessories for Salagapurthi. She was using the same when 
till the age of 27. In 2005, she went all the way from Minneapolis to New Jersey to participate in a dance competition there. She participated in a uh, group dance with her cousins and they won the second prize there. That was her passion. I just wanted her to excel in whatever she does. I'm very happy she started her own school, dance school. And she is dancing and teaching dance with great passion. I'm very proud of it. I wish all success for her academy and all her students. And I congratulate once again the students and the teacher. By God's grace, she got a very good uh, students and uh, their motivating parents. Thank you for being here. And once again, I wish you all very best. Thank you. Yeah, that's my mom. Some of my friends seen her for the first time today. I ever did. She was senior at the time. And I was traveling for work. And we had this sort of a lot of formalities at the time. This time I wanted to do everything with proper formal way of delivering things. Thank you, mom. Um, yeah, without that lady. Without my mom, I wouldn't be here today. So back in 2005 was the first time I landed in the US. And uh, there were, I, I would say just my mom, right? My mom came and saw me here only in 2006. But when I landed here, there were a few people who had seen me dance back in India. So when I landed here, we were like, Oh, you are such a wonderful dancer. And after seeing all the performances here, we want you to go on stage here and perform. And I was taking it easy. I came here for work. Um, I was here in the US for the first time. I was no, here no, here. No, no, no. One fine day, my friend in my team, he pulled my desk. I mean, he pulled my chair, made me sit next to his desk, and he dialed every single dance company in the Twin Cities. And he said, You have to audition with one of them and perform with them here. That's how I started dancing. I have danced back then with a few dance companies that are still up, uh, functioning here in the big cities. But then my mom visited me in 2006 and she said, like, no, you should start on your own. Your passion is different and your style is different. And you should, you know, share that with a bunch of kids who are who, have, who share the same passion. Right? That's when I started it. And now I'm here. It's 2021. Uh, I know I've had a few hiccups with my knee, my head, my hand, but I'm still surviving with the support of not just the parents, I would say. The biggest support actually is from the students because I don't dance like I used to. They don't get to imitate me anymore. I just show them, I tell them, okay, this hasta, this leg work, and then now they are at an age where they are, you know, they are mature enough to understand that. So I'm blessed right now to have this bunch of kids. Like Rani mentioned, like everybody else are saying, the next milestone is the allegation. And we have to start preparing for that. Now that you get the feel of the song, right? Yeah, you will do with that every other dance here after. Every single dance will be with that. Okay. So I have a certificate that I would like to give it to them. Um, but before that, Thank you. 
So this one made me write it down. She said like, oh, you need to talk about them, but you need to write it down too. So I've written it down. And I'm not going to say the name of the kids when I start talking. So let's see if you can guess who I've talked about. Okay? The one I'm talking about first, she's my versatile dancer, who is the sport when it comes to any dance forms. She's one of my solid pillars I can count on to deliver what I envision as a choreographer on how the dance should flow. She is a kid who takes every correction in the right sense and showcases her talent to the fullest. She has grown up into a very confident and strong dancer today. One who can execute complex choreography with ease. Since the start of her dance journey, she was a kid who would feel bad missing on a single session. I remember getting texts from my mom, I mean, from, from her mom letting me know that she's not going to be able to do properly this session. There are days where I have not seen the text until the class is done. And when I see it, I would be like, oh, really? I didn't see any difference in her performance in my class. That's how she usually does in my sessions. This is her passion. This actually shows her passion for dancing. Not just dance. I remember when there were very tiny, tiny thoughts in my class. We used to have summer camps, and one of the times I was asking, like, okay, let's sing a song. And she didn't hesitate. Immediately she sang. And I remember telling her, like, when you sing, you should sing from the bottom of your tummy, right? Like, it should be from your tummy, and it should be open. Like, you should, you should sing wholehearted. I'm not her music teacher. But even that advice, she took it with a very good spirit, and she follows me everything really good. Any guesses? And she, yeah, so proud of you, and she. Congratulations on completing this milestone. Keep up your good work. Can I have a certificate? The next one. She's a kid who started off as a very gentle dancer and the one kid who has displayed the most improvements in the last one, be it her body posture, her leg work, her expressions, everything a good dancer needs and that she has developed in the last one year for practice, through the practice for the Salanda teacher. What I have noticed is that once she started appreciating, I know when she was, they joined, they were like six, they still had not appreciated the dance form. Right? So once they started appreciating this dance form, she gave 100%. She started enjoying and delivering all her dances with her sweet smile and expressions. Of course, being so hardworking, she did have to come over some painful days. But I was always surprised at how she would mask her pain through her beautiful expressions. Any guesses? Anika. Congratulations, Anika. You have come a long way. Wish you continue to dance with the same passion as you do today. Okay, good luck. This girl is one of my oldest students. She started dancing at a very tender age. And I've told this story multiple times, and I'm going to tell it one more time for the record. She was one of the smallest kids in a team of performers that I was choreographing and getting them ready for a performance. And she had the habit of going all over the stage. When you get on the performance, like she's all over. 
So I'm on the day of the performance, I get on the stage and I tell her like, you're going to stand right here and not move anywhere. She took me very seriously. The whole performance, she did not move from the spot. Even when she was supposed to move in the rest of the group. Who is it? But today she's transformed totally into an expressive dancer. Whenever she gets on stage, I don't know what comes over her. She's a completely transformed different person on stage. More so on non-classical side. I hope that you will enjoy doing Bharatanatyam as much as you do non-classical. Congratulations. We did it, didn't we? Yes. Okay. This one is another very gentle dancer. Until today, she's a gentle dancer. When she dances, nobody can be heard. Neither the floor nor her feet. Who is it? Adna. I remember her from very young because we were neighbors. And uh, they were friends. Chris and uh, Sadna had been friends before they even started talking. Um, then they came over for the class. I'm like, this one is very familiar. This one is very familiar. But then I, then I remember looking at Kalyani and her younger sister, and I realized, oh, this is my neighbor, Sadna. She's the quietest in the class, doesn't talk much, but she delivers. Congratulations, Sadna. Keep up and try to check her. Well, you can only two kids, so you can always make it guess very easy, right? This girl has come a long way with me. From one of the very quiet ones in the class to one of the giggliest ones right now. From one of the shy ones to one of the expressive ones when she's dancing on stage. She must have had multiple nightmares of me making her do 30 meters away in our movies. Right, Tanvi? Yeah. Even one last year, since we started our practices for the Salam Puja, she's a good has tremendous improvement. Um, her, her expressions match every other flaw that she has. Not that you have flaw, but whenever, like you, you, you understand what I mean. So even with this small mistake, I was telling her like the Padam that they did today, uh, the Padam on Lord Ayapa, I was asking her like, you will be able to dance that in your sleep, right? Because yesterday when she was practicing, it was easy for her. So that's how much she has grown over the last one year. Congratulations, Sami. Keep the Only one, so no guessing. I'm going to talk with the name. If I have to talk about Krista, I can talk for hours. Um, I still remember um, this is one of the reasons. She's one of the reasons that I started the dance school. Um, she's one of the first, she was one of the students in the first batch. I still remember when I was teaching back in Egan before I started the school. She was about four years old and she would tag along to the classes, mostly to play with kids. Um, but um, if I look now, she's one of the kids who have come a long way. She was a very slow bloomer. It's a very beautiful one. Um, I keep thinking, she was, when she was very young, she was one of my biggest fans and biggest critics. So when I do a choreography, she'll be like, oh, that looks very funny. This looks like that. And, uh, but one of, the fun, one of the performances, after I got down from the stage, she was like, I would love to see myself performing there than just seeing you from the audience. So I said like, okay. Let's try that, right? Uh, but there's one thing that I have to say. At her age, I just had one thing to do. I just had to practice what I was learning, deliver what I was supposed to. At the same age, she has bigger burden. She has a bigger duty. 
Not only does she practice her own items, she has to help deliver my choreography. Especially with the struggling days that I have had, like the frustrating days with my knee hurting, my hip hurting, and I'm not able to dance and show the choreography, she picks it up for me. So I'm very thankful that I have somebody who supports me throughout. Um, also, it's like, um, I'm always hard on her. Everybody must have noticed, right? I'm like super hard, extra hard on her than the rest of my kids. I can be, right? Right, Linda? Just kidding. The thing is like, I have seen her full potential sometimes, uh, but she rarely displays that in public. So it's an extra struggle for both of us. We, we have a tug of war, like you have to deliver this good. So congratulations, Trisa. Uh, today, I'm a proud guru, a prouder mom, and uh, wholeheartedly bless you to do better throughout your life. I love you. So yes, yeah, we are done for the day. Um, Thank you everybody for being here. Uh, thank you so much to our Guru Meena. Uh, without her, all this cannot be possible. Congratulations to all the ladies today. Uh, as on behalf of the school, we would like to give you the five-year anniversary gift. Thanks again. Thanks to all the parents who showed up in. Uh, uh, and giving us the support for the, uh, building this school. And good luck, Mina.
In addition, we used to have a great time in class, bonding with Krista, Joanne, and Sandy. In Bharatanatyam, we also learned a lot about our culture. We learned about Indian mythological stories. And when I dance, I feel as if I'm one of the characters in the story. For us to understand Bharatanatyam, we need to learn the stories and emotions in them that we need to depict. I also learned essential life lessons like perseverance, patience, and hard work during my dance journey. I'm also thankful that I've been able to continue learning dance th throughout the pandemic. I look forward to learning more about Bharatanatyam in the future. I'm excited and happy to be part of this wonderful experience here today and showcase my learning to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 